Oh, let me just check. Brilliant stuff. Um, so welcome to the next open day session. Um, we have another fantastic session ready um, to come up. Um, so I would like to introduce Leandro, who will be giving us a fantastic session on a plugin um, that is for the elaboration of cadastral survey plans um, and for land register documents. So I would like to hand over to you. Okay, Ian, thank you. Should I start to share my screen now? Yes, go for it. Um, try to share. Okay. Can I start? Go for it. Yes, uh, I can see everything's great. Thank you, Ian. Um, okay, thank you for joining. In this QGIS Open Day, I will talk about the LF2s, uh, plugin for automation of cadastral survey plans and land register with documents. Here, the speaker is Len França from Brazil. I am cartographic engineer and developer of the LF2s for QGIS. Um, Uh, the LF2s plugin is a very recent plugin, just over one year old. Um, this plugin brings a set of simple solutions aimed at uh, geoprocessing, that is, tools for vector data, raster, GNSS, cartography, databases, drones, spatial statistics, survey, and mainly the production of land register documents. In the uh, current version of uh, LF2s, we have 66 tools and 16 functions. It's fun that the uh, very first version, our colleagues dubbed LF2s as QG's Swiss Art Multi Tool. Uh, very fun. And we are using this term too as a Swiss Army Multi Tool. Uh, so uh, who LF2s is best suited for? Uh, LF2s is dedicated for surveyors, um, cartographers, but today many geographers and professionals from different areas have used LF2s. That is, anyone who is dealing with the geotechnology can perhaps find a solution in the plugin for their work. Uh, before everything, I will just give a, a brief of I'm talking. Uh, I, I, I'm talking about the LF2s, uh, who is the best suit for, and how to use LF2s. I will uh, just explain a little bit. And I will present the week on GitHub. And after that, let's go to the objective of this lecture talking about some considerations of land register, also known as cadastre here in Brazil, the, the steps necessary to guarantee uh, automation through standardization of database, in this case, the topo geo, and show some survey plans and the descriptions. Finally, I will do a brief de demonstration in QGIS and a conclusion. So, as I show you, the Swiss R Multi Tool, and who is the LF2 the best suited, as I show you, uh, that is, anyone who is dealing with geotechnology can perhaps find a solution in the plugin for their work. And how to use the LF2 plugin? Uh, it's very simple, just install the official QGIS repository. So the 66 uh, tools reappear in the processing toolbox and the 16 functions will appear together with the native functions of QGIS and other custom functions, as we can see in the figure below. And 
Uh, now let's take a look at the LF2s week on GitHub. Uh, this is the link access. So here we are in the week on GitHub. We can see uh, all the all the tools, a description, and uh, we have a uh, figure to explain and a better understanding of what each two do. And all the tools are organized in categories, as you can see, cadastry, cartography, documents, drones, easy, um, postgis, GNSS, we have a lot of tools here. And also we have the description in English and Portuguese too. Um, and we have a, a playlist on YouTube explaining uh, each two. Um, and the code, we have the code here and where the people can check the, the code for each two or the expression. We have the expression here, the functions that uh, do the automation in QGIS. So let's continue in our presentation. Um, land arrest consideration, very important. Uh, now let's look at some consideration about the land register. Uh, property georeference, cadastral survey plans, and the deed description are essential documents for the regularization of properties. These documents hold uh, the limits of the property and its boundaries, assuring protection of this property. The main Brazilian institution responsible for cadastral survey and land regularization do not have a centralized solution. I mean, data model and software for making survey plans and the descriptions. The method developed in this work has already been applied in Brazil and can also be applied or adapted to other counter specifications. And what is our solution proposal? First, adopt QGIS as geographic information system software, of course, because it's free. Also, adopt a specific format to store geospatial data. In this case, geopackage. Why geopackage? First, first, file portability. That is, you can take your project on a flash drive. Very easy to edit and add new fields and add the thematic information. And above all, the interoperability. That is, you can use it on any other platform. In this case, we call the database as TopoGeo. It's just a name to call this data model. Briefly, our methodology for automating survey plans and cadastral documents is based on the TopoGeo database. And this is achieved through the functions and scripts of the LF2's plugin. So let's take a look at the TopoGeo data model. These are all feature classes here. Um, and the feature classes are organized uh, by categories, as you can see, limits, reference, analysis, artificial features, and natural features. The main uh, important layers are uh, limit point, boundary element, and property area. It's a point line and polygon layers. Um, here are the names and descriptions of the fields for the limit point, boundary element, and property area. Uh, the field name and uh, simple description of each uh, field and values, possible values, uh, code list here. On this slide, we can see a simplified representation of all classes, 
remembering that the most important uh, feature classes for the survey plan and the description are these three above, uh, limit point, boundary element, and property area. So uh, just a simple, uh, simplified class diagram of the topo gel uh, model. Uh, if you are inter interested in learn more about the topo gel data model, this is a link uh, to a conference paper uh, that's available on ResearchGate. Uh, and you can find this uh, documentation about topo gel. Um, let's try. OK. Uh, ResearchGate, you have a more complete explanation about this uh, data model. OK. And you can check the explanation with more details. You can read and you can implement. Uh, you can construct a geopact uh, using the descriptions in this uh, conference paper. OK. And back to the presentation. We have, um, uh, we also have an ebook, but in this case, uh, only in Portuguese. I hope to be able to translate it into English soon. But we have an ebook with a complete uh, uh, methodology to create the project and all the automations in KGIS. But now let's make things more practical. Let's talk about automation in QGIS. Uh, first, let's see what you can do with Python function for automation. For example, uh, create a D table, um, guidance board, uh, calculate the local tangent plane area, meridian convergence, um, scale factor, etc. You can do a lot of cool things here. In the case uh, of the table functions here, uh, we have as input the limit point, name of layer. Uh, and as output, we have an HTML table with all coordinates, azimuths, and distance. Um, here we can see the D table in a survey plan. It's important to note that this table allows the perfect geographs of a property. Here like we can see the uh, east, north, and height coordinates, the size, azimuth, and distance is uh, uh, an example we can uh, create with several uh, vertex here. You can adjust the table size. It's very good. I will show you uh, in the end of this presentation. Um, about the documents generated by the LF tools, we have the following documents. We have the description, area, perimeter report, and geodetic mark report. Uh, to generate them, it's necessary that the limit point, boundary element, and property area layers are in the topo geo model. In all cases, the output file will be in HTML format, which can be a temporary file or the path where, where it will be saved on a computer disk. The output can be printed direct from, uh, uh, direct from the disk, computer disk. The output can be printed direct from the internet browser or open in any text editor such as Lib LibreOffice, Writer, or Microsoft Word. Uh, these are the documentation tools, the, the description, area and perimeter report, and geodetic mark report. Now let's see some results for survey plans and documents. Here we have a survey plan with contours showing the elevation of the terrain and hydrography. Um, and here we have a survey plan with drones image. Nice, isn't it? And 
these are the documents I've spoken of. The description, uh, area and parent report, and uh, geodetic mark description or report. Um, before the conclusion, I will show you in QGIS, the LF2s. Um, let me change here. Uh, QGIS here. So in this project, we can see uh, the categories, category limits, reference, analysis, artificial features, natural features, uh, change the the theme, map construction. We can see the three main layers, point, line, and polygon. Here is a limit point, boundary element, and property area. The main construction of a survey plan and to generate the documentation is necessary to have the, the three layers mainly. Um, I will show you first the survey plan in the layout. We have a layout, a page in the size A1. Just double click and it's open. Here we are. Okay. Uh, uh, here you can see the DD table. It's just a table with the vertex, vertex name, coordinates, um, sides, and respective azimuth and distance. Everything is uh, automatic here. This construction of this table on the survey plan is created uh, using this expression here, this function. Okay, you can check this expression. Uh, here I will. Okay, it's better to, to see here. Um, here we have the function. The function is added when you install the LF2s. Uh, we can see the, the function DD table here. First parameter is the point layer. We have uh, the topo geo data mode with all the fields necessary to get the uh, information necessary to create this table here. And here we have uh, the first point, the last point, minus one means the last point, but you can break your table in several tables uh, if necessary. Table is very good, very big. <laughs> you can break uh, in the order of the points. And here is the title. If you need to, to create a title for the, the table, in this case, we have no title, but you can create here. I will just put here my title, my title. And let's check here. Um, I am going to OK. And I will refresh. HTML. Oh, oops, I have, I think I did something wrong here. Uh, my title. I will try to do something. I think I did something wrong. I will uh, fresh here. I think uh, something. Uh, oh, I just, I know what happened. I will change the, I added new function here. So I'm going to put the title again, my title. And I'm going to refresh. Okay, I'm safe. <laughs> and uh, live demos. <laughs> <laughs> now it's, it's happened when we are online <laughs> uh, <laughs> always <laughs> no, but this is awesome but i i'm going to to put the the real name of this this property it is in portuguese see to some well i'm going to refresh email 
So we have uh, the table uh, description with coordinates. We, as I, uh, I said, uh, we can break this table in several tables. We can create uh, just, we have just one property, but you can create two, three, several properties in the same survey plane. Um, we have other automations here. Um, for example, all the information about the property we get from the attribute table of the, the, the layers, in the case, property area. So we have the information uh, about the, the documentation, about the survey date, scale, everything is get uh, automatically. We don't need to write nothing. Everything is get from the um, the layers or the project information here, scale map. Everything is is uh, very easy, very fast, quickly. You can create in uh, survey plan like this. Okay, and the area we have the um, this board with the area. The area also is get automatically from uh, property area. We have area in UTM area and local tangent plane area. Yeah, we have lots of um, functions here. For example, to calculate local tangent plane area that is more precise, and we have different altitudes. Uh, we have several, we have different types of the table too, where you can use it uh, with Atlas. Uh, uh, we have uh, several, several, several automation here, but mo most important in this case, in this presentation is the, the table, the first the automation we create. Um, let's see more things here. Um, the convergence meridian also is calculated here in the function. Um, let's see, it's blocked. Okay, now I can see. We have the center of the map. We get the coordinates in the geographic uh, coordinate system, and you can calculate the meridian convergence in this in the center of the map. And this figure, uh, the convergence figure, is also automatically uh, put here. Let's see, key here. Okay. Now we have the, also an automation to get the sign and the direction of the north here uh, for the, the figure to use. We have two, two types of figures and uh, according to the position, uh, the center, the coordinate and the sign of the convergence meridian, we, we will choose the correct figure. So we have lots of uh, automation here, but I'm going to the documentation. So I was explaining about the survey plan. I will close the layout. And let's go to the documentation in the LF2s plugin. As I showed you in the week, all the, the tools are here, 66 tools, cartography, and documents. That is the main focus of this presentation. Uh, first, I will show you the, the description. The description. Uh, translate the three layers into a text where, uh, where are used to regularization of a property. And so we will get the main information of three layers, just three clicks, uh, limit point, uh, boundary element, and property area, three layers. You can choose the the sequence of coordinates, uh, north, east, and altitude, and 
the logo you can change the logo if it is empty the logo of the plugin will appear but uh, you can choose you can change the the logo or you use the QG's logo and uh, I can change this logo and the text below the the, the peer the image I use I love I love QG's and uh, the description you can save in HTML file or uh, uh, save as temporary file just do, do not need to to save I you run okay I'm going to close it uh, let's take a look of the the description okay this is the description here in the HTML you can print just control and P and save it as PDF or print directly on your printer um, in this case I can save as PDF and share all the information here I will show you uh, a description here uh, about the information of the properties and as text the information about the coordinates the first coordinate and the perimeter and azimuth and distance and information about the characteristic of each boundary elements and information about the coordinate system it's very important uh, and the signature uh, and all this thing is created automatically do not write nothing the template is here and you can change the logo you can change the slogan you can uh, do uh, very fast very easy in QGIS um, let's see some more documents here um, this is the, the, the table this is the, the description but you can create the area and perimeter report let's take a look just need to uh, choose two layers the limit point and probate area I uh, left this uh, amped no problem and I am going to run I run the area and perimeter report let's see the results so we have the, the table with the coordinates in the UTM project and coordinate system of your project and geographic coordinate or geodetic coordinates here longitude latitude area perimeter perimeter projection uh, it's uh, another way to represent the, uh, the informations mainly the coordinates and air perimeter of a property and uh, the, another uh, thing you can do is the documentation of survey or geodetic mark uh, I'm changing the the theme here to a main main map where the the map is show shown in the survey plane, and we have uh, an example of survey mark here. Let me change here. Here, okay. This is a survey mark. We can see the information uh, about the survey mark here. I going to use this tool to see the form. We have a form with all the information about the survey mark that is filled, and we see the images, also pictures about uh, the the mark and all the information. So I want to translate this information in a document in a PDF format so I needed to use this two here geodetic mark report just double click and you need to choose this layer reference point I'm going to choose a reference point the code you need to uh, uh, set the code here which is m04 I write M. 
uh, logo is Logan. I'm going to left in black. And I'm going to run. Okay, let's take a look in the results. We have here create automatically the this document. I'm going to control and P to print, and we have all the informations, the Picture figures are resized to be adjusted to the table. And all the information that are in the form now is here in this document. You can print as PDF. Yeah, everything is OK. And one another tool, very cool and new tool on LF2s, uh, is this, this points from the description? What does uh, what does the, this do do? This perform a reconstitution of the description. When you have a text like this, we have the text, and we can translate to a point layer to get the coordinates and vertex uh, code and so we can uh, get this information here it's very easy you just copy the text i will copy the, the text here i copy and paste here okay just copy and paste and we are using regular expression uh, the pattern this uh, pattern is identified. Um, you can click here to uh, find more about uh, regular expression and test here. But for the LF2's documentation, this is uh, OK. This is uh, the uh, default, default value. OK? And you just need to adjust the code the code vertex okay let's um, test here uh, just need you uh, to put your text here and if you want to save as a shape file or a geo package or another format you can save here i'm going to create just a temporarily and run oops uh, we have a, a simple problem here. The number of puts and values do not match. No problem. We can check. We can check what can happen uh, wrong here. Let's see here. Okay. We have a vertex M uh, because of the uh, new line. I'm going to delete here. Okay. Now we have the pattern M-05. Okay. Uh, let's go. I'm going to run again. Okay. Uh, now we have a point layer created from the documentation using regular expression on um, LF2s. Okay. I will change this symbol just to check here if you are okay. I am going to uh, turn on limit point. Um, and all the, the layers. Okay, now we have uh, a way to create from a text like this the the layer with just uh, one copy and paste. It's very simple. You don't need uh, to organize the coordinates. The regular expression do everything for you. <laughs> and uh, we have several. Uh, Tools here, uh, 66 tools, but the important for the this presentation are this documentation tools here. But uh, it's very good, um, simple simple tools, but can help a lot. Mainly the surveyors, cartographers, uh, anyone who who is using QGIS, it can save a lot of time and. Go to uh, conclusion. Uh, 
let's go to the conclusion. As conclusion, we proved that QGIS with Python can be used for elaboration of technical documents of topographic survey. It's noted that using Python automation, we gain productivity. In Brazil, we are aligning with governed free software usage policies, uh, ensuring independence and economy of public resource. And also, the methodology presenting this work can be easily adapted to a specification of other counters, user counters, which is pretty cool, huh? Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. I would like to thank the QGIS community for this opportunity. Um, also to friends and professors from Military Institute of Engineering, Federal University of Pernambuco, and other institutions um, like the Brazilian Army, and a special thanks to all geonistas in Brazil and worldwide. Thank you so much. That's it. Thank you, Amy. Oh, brilliant stuff. That was fantastic. This is such a fantastic tool. It's very useful. I can see how it can be applied literally everywhere. Um, so we have a couple of questions. Um, I can see everyone in the room is clapping. Thank you for that amazing presentation. Um, can I start posing some questions? Um, for anyone who is in the room, just raise your hand and I will pick you out. But I'm going to start with a question from the live chat on YouTube. Um, let's start off with um, Pervertish. I'm probably killing your name. I'm so sorry. Um, can I use this amazing tool through PyQGIS API? Um, actually, we can see the, the code on GitHub and mm. you can adapt for your scripts and functions. The code are in the GitHub. Let me check here. Um, on GitHub, you can, uh, everything is open. So uh, we use packages, um, and mainly Python. And for automation, we use a simple HTML for creating tables, creating um, the uh, organize the, the information to be uh, a document. So I think it, uh, I don't know if he, he understand, but <laughs> this is the no, the, no, the pipeline for to solve this problem. <laughs> Alrighty, I see in the room, um, Taras, you have your hand up. Please go ahead and ask your question. Um, you've unmuted, but I can't hear you for some reason. Alrighty, I'm going to, while Taras sorts out his connection, I'll ask you the next question. So Donald asks, well, first of all, he says, great tool. Um, can you, which can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead oh. and ask your question. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Thank, you, thank you again for the presentation. It was really enjoyable. Um, I have several questions. The first one, how can the GIS community involved in translation? You mentioned that there is a, a Portuguese and English version available, but do you think in the future that people will need other questions and so the GIS community can help you? Very good question. Um, the people can uh, translate or adapt uh, some solutions of LF2s, uh, the code can be replicated. You can get parts of code, or you can um, alter directly on GitHub in LF2s project. You can uh, just uh, add here directly on the code, but uh, we need help. We need the help to translate to another language. Languages, uh, as I said, the LF2s, it's 
just in the beginning <laughs> it was uh, i create for for fun to help my my students and uh, i think we have to to improve several things and the and the language the, the translation is i think uh, uh, i think that one thing we have to improve okay <laughs> So yeah, basically, get so in much. contact through GitHub, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you May have any more questions? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Go for it. Um, go for it. Um, I'm, I've seen a tool actually calculating polygon an angles for uh, from LF um, plugging. LF. Yeah. And it's currently only available for single part polygons. So it's not available for multi polygons. Yeah. Uh, Will you extend with the time the functionality for multi polygons? Yes, you can create because I, I, I remember that I choose only the first polygon of a multi polygon, but it is not difficult to to add this functionality to multi polygon too. Um, I just need to improve uh, more one thing to or create simple parts with uh, the calculate angle angles is not it's not difficult it's not difficult yep. i can <laughs> i can create this this solution too <laughs> thank you and i think it would be nice if the result of this tool can possess a sort of id of your original polygons because after creation you have the order of your indexes of your vertices but you don't have the id of original polygon so is, this is just a tiny suggestion. And the okay, third question, um, I noticed that LF tools uh, partially replicate some native QJS tools. For instance, I can compare reverse vertex order with force right hand rule. And yeah, yeah okay. this one. Um, and the question, uh, do you think that with the time part of your tools can uh, substitute QGIS tools or either extend them? I, as I said, I am in the beginning. I'm learning a lot of things. And uh, if I possible to to contribute the native native tools of QGIS will be very good. Um, and this is a, a tool I have used and it's very, very simple. And I think that we can can add or uh, improve some uh, QGIS to, tools. Uh, uh, but I am, as I said, I'm the beginning, and I, I would like uh, to to contribute. I uh, just need to learn more about the the project <laughs> and and help and test. Uh, I think and and create you. Um, pictures I like to to write, to draw <laughs> all the all these pictures I, I I draw using QGIS or Inkscape. It's a very good um, uh, software for drawing, and I, I would like to to uh, help in any way the QGIS project. Um, but uh, I I think I I have to to learn a lot to 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 uh achieve the level of you, your developers <laughs> but uh i'm i'm very happy to create simple tools like that and uh it will be uh, very good <laughs> awesome to help you Alrighty, i see um john neary you have a question do you want to unmute and ask your question yes john Um, your hands up. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, for now, um, I'm going to just ask a couple of last questions um, that are coming through on the actual live chat in, in YouTube. So the one is from Donald. Can you show how to get ground distances in the annotation reports? Is there a way to do that? Ground distance. Let me see this. 
this question here. Um, can you re repeat, please, the, the question? Sure. Can you show how to get ground distance in the annotation or reports? Um, does that make here, sense? <laughs> the, the does not calculate the ground distance. We mm. uh, calculate the, the area in the local tangent plane, as you can see in the survey, survey uh, local tangent or local geodetic system. We create a local tangent plane, and the area is calculated here, and is taking into consideration the height. We so the the area and distance are different. We use here um, uh, for some organization in Brazil, the area must be in the in this coordinate reference system here. So uh, LF tools just calculate. Uh, area different, uh, different area here, but um, grand distance are not calculated here. I, I don't remember, but uh, I think that grand distance are not calculated in the LF2s. Okay. Cool. Um, then another question coming in from Philly Rari um, is: Is there any tool in your plugin? or any plan to develop a tool um, to tie points from total stations and GPS? Mm. For total station, we have um, simple tools to transform azimuth and distance to a point layer or line layer, uh, indicated the distance and azimuth uh, and the first coordinate to uh, build the, the layers. Uh, we have a um, closed polygonal. Uh, when you have the first azimuth points, um, the list of distance and angles, coordinate reference system, and these two may uh, do the adjustment uh, to close polygonal. And we have another uh, two is transverse, transverse adjustment, transverse adjustment, where we have the first and the last azimuth and this distance. Uh, in this case, two points in the first and two points in the end. And the uh, measurements of a total station, like distance, and the angles, and you can adjust like this picture. Um, it's a very simple uh, example that you can apply for some exercises of um, uh, topography or classes. I, I did this too to um, exercise of my, my graduation in in geodetic science in, in Federal University of Pernambuco and create this solution and uh, made it available for everyone in the LF2s. So we have the solution for GNSCS, um, uh, just two solutions, good solutions. One, first is for to get the NMF format, this NMF. Uh, for GNSCS, when we use our receiver, you can save the information in this format and you, you can open Q, QGIS very easy. We have a simple statistics here to uh, get the best solution um, here. And you can see the kinematic, solu kinematic solution, or I mean, all the points you can see and number of satellites, the number, uh, the quality, the precision. It's uh, simple, but very good because I need the, the, to read several NMAP files in Q QGIS to produce my maps. And so I created it. Another two is to open the output of RTKLib to process RINEX 
and the output is a pause file, uh, position file, and you can open directly in QGIS. Um, it's very easy uh, and help a lot to open the output ArtKlib Art with precision, with all information directly in QGIS. Uh, and uh, I think that is, but uh, can help the people who is working with GNSS, with, which is working with uh, ArtKlib, OK? Yeah. And I, I want to create more tools uh, uh, directly for GNSS. This, this tool is just the first first two tools, but I, I, I want to create more and uh, improve that. Brilliant stuff. Um, I see that Alfred in the live um, chat asks, is there somewhere that he can learn more about the Aleph tools? Is there a little bit of documentation or would it be best for him to go to the um, GitHub? Um, where would be best to learn more about this? Yes, um, we just have a um, the week, mm. the week, uh, the description. The description uh, basically is the description on the on each two. We have the description here. So if you want to see all the descriptions organized here, you can um, look in the week of LF tools. But we have a um, playlist on YouTube. I'm sorry because uh, all all tutorials are in Portuguese. And <laughs> Still I, in point future, and click. <laughs> in the future, I, I want to to uh, record some tutorials classes in in English too. But mm. uh, I said I, I'm the beginning. I, I I'm learning. Um, by QGIS, I'm learning Python. I'm, but I think that I can do uh, a lot of things, a lot of tutorials in the future. If you, the, uh, the people are liking, the user are liking the, the solution, uh, of course I can create yeah. more, more tutorials, yeah. write more uh, articles, <laughs> but uh, one step uh, I, I am doing um, each solution. For you but uh, i'm available to answer questions if you, anyone have um uh, some some dots um, uh, questions you can ask uh, i will try to answer the best best way awesome and then last of the um the questions from the live chat because we only have about four minutes left is from donald and he says do lf tools calculate scale factor Yes, you can calculate the scale factor um, in the expressions here. Uh, for example, for a point point layer, you can use the field calculator, and um, find here a scale factor uh, for. Um, Considering the UTM projection, uh, you can calculate the, the, the scale or CAPA here, uh, we call CAPA uh, factor, based on feature coordinates. We just need to uh, indicate the longitude and latitude of the point layer that you can get easily using this. Okay, let's. Let's do here. It's a very easy scale factor. Then I change long longitude. I use the x coordinate and y coordinate, and we have the, um, the scale factor for this point. So you can change the feature here, and you have a different uh, scale factor. Um, it's not. It's very very easy to use. I think that you can calculate in other ways, but and you use um, a function here in the field calculator is very is very easy and quick. 
see, you can uh, achieve this result here and uh, for different different features if you have a um, polygon or a line you just need to calculate the centroid and the centroid you can get the x and y coordinates okay awesome um donald says brilliant <laughs> great stuff um i think that is probably all we're going to have time for um i see there is one last question from ambrose in who is actually in this meeting Hi, ambrose um are there future plans to incorporate gnss network adjustment and monitoring into your tool um, can you repeat repeat please sure um are there plans to incorporate gnss network adjustment and monitoring gns mm, monitor mm. I, I i need this question in there uh right uh could you type this, this question for me to answer in the um in the it's place? it's in the chat in the it's chat the last question please because yeah. i i need to understand no that the question and try to to answer the best way all righty well you know what we only have one minute left so what i'm going to do is um end off the session um so that we can go on to the next one for the open day but if you want more information on the lft tools or lf tools please go to the wiki. Um, it was, of course, in uh, Leandro's presentation. Um, so please go to the wiki, get in touch, have a look at the tools, start playing around with them, look at the tutorials. Um, and I'm sure that um, if you get in touch, especially with the community, everyone is willing to help out. So that just leaves me to say thank you so much, um, Leandro, for giving such an amazing presentation. I think this is a fantastic set of tools. Um, very, very useful indeed. Um, and hopefully when you're further on in the project, when um, you have all the things exactly how you like, we can revisit. Thank you, Amy. Thank you a lot for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.